Hi, this is Kelly from Corporate Legal, and uh, actually this is the first time that the Corporate Legal would like to use the video and try to share with you a certain case. And actually the case is um, it's a doubt from the, the, the public source, and things like this we just use in the YouTube channel and try to share with you the idea. And so we cannot use in the, our groups, the, our own case, uh, so that we just adopt in the source of case. And uh, today's the case we'd like to share with you is uh, talking about uh, the, the subcontractors of the bill of lading. As you know that the subcontractor actually is not a party of the bill of lading, but actually it's the subcontractor that they can still apply the limitation of liability. This issue has been discussed for many times. Uh, actually it's in the US system that's the from the district court to the Supreme Court, they have a lot of argument for this issue for a long time already. Uh, when I uh, uh, when I in African line, they actually also have the case uh, the, a case that is uh, happened uh, the similar occasion. Uh, the cargo is the steel coil. That actually, as you know, that uh, such kind of cargo is uh, has been construed as a dangerous cargo already. And uh, a lot of the carrier, including the Evergreen Line now, they also reject such kind of cargo. Thinks that that cargo is uh, heavier and need to fix it in the container. Otherwise, when during the transportation, not only for the marine, the ocean transportation, in the in the land transportation, in the rail trail, that would be possible. If that the cargo cannot be fixed very strictly, then that will cargo will be turned to be a very dangerous cargo. And that will cause the, uh, the uh, uh, major uh, accident and cause a lot of injuries or uh, damage. So, uh, uh, so when the Evergreen Line has carried such kind of cargo and uh, uh, have uh, 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 a big accident, then um, that the actually the, the accident is happening in the in the railroad transportation, and uh, that's in the the cause in the containers the trailer that caused the damage. And that then come to the issue whether the railroad trans, trans, transportation, the carrier, that they can still apply the limitation of COSA. And we will talk about what is the COSA later on. So, I mean, so when we get into the, this, the, this case, uh, this case uh, just had been released by the District Court of New York recently. And uh, before getting to the story that we like to share with you, certain terminology that we that will be relevant to this case. Uh, first of all, that just as we mentioned about the, the COSA, C O G S A. Uh, actually, this is the abbreviation. That is the carriers of the carriers of, uh, of goods by C Act. That is actually the the U S. United States statute uh, that is the uh, try to uh, that is the stipulate uh, the relationship the the right and the responsibilities of the carrier and also the the cargo interest. Uh, this is the cause that I just mentioned. This is the the United States and the the, the statute. And the second terminology we are like to share with you. Is uh, common amendment. Uh, actually, this is also the U.S. and the, the statute. That is the that, that is amendment to the Interstate Commerce Act. That is also regulation that the the, the carry the carriage. Uh, be, between the cargo, between the interstates, uh, from this state to another state, or to the Columbia the district, or to the, the adjacent foreign the country. This is the common method. Uh, then uh, we were also that uh, shared with you the, the terminology that is called the Himalaya cross. Uh, why call Himalaya? 
uh, this is not the related to the, the modern Himalaya. Actually, this is the name of the vessel. Uh, actually, that is the, the story about the lady. Actually, the vessel is the cruise vessel, not a container ship. The, the lady, when they board in this cruise vessel, and that she uh, get an injury, so that she's, uh, she's cramped and the, the damages from the ship owner. Uh, but ship owner just uh, applied the, the limitation of liability of the carrier in accordance with the, their ticket, uh, the, term and condition, the term and condition of the ticket. Therefore, that the ladies if get angry, she cannot get uh, what she wants from the, the ship owner. Therefore, she keep continue, and then uh, she sued the all the crews of the vessel, and then uh, at that time things that they have so much such kind of uh, concept and idea and try to protect the subcontractor of the carrier. So at that time that she uh, have successfully that is the crime the damage from the crews, crew the all the crew. Uh, actually, this is unfair. The frankly speaking, things uh, if the the vessel. The owner that they can apply the limitation of liability. Why the crews need to respond for their boats, and then so they, they after that that the the ship owner just try to protect their subcontractor. So they have put it such kind of clause in their bill of lading, including our sort of bill of lading now use, and that that is uh, we call this a Himalaya clause, and the, the the only purpose is just try to protect. That the, our subcontractor uh, will get get rid of the, the, the crime from the from the, uh, the cargo interest. Uh, that's that the subcontractor that they can apply the same with the, the cargo cargo the, the vessel owner that they can apply the limitation of liability. So this is what we call the Himalayas clause. And uh, actually, if you back to the common amendment, that common amendment actually is also the congressman's name. So a lot of, I mean, you know, the and a lot of the statue that they just use the, some kind of the congressman name or some kind of, you know, for Himalaya, that is the best of the name. And then that is uh, another the, the terminology that uh, we use for this case, that is for the uh, Paramount Cross. Actually, Paramount Cross, and that is also the, the U.S. federal federal uh, law that needs the, to put it in the bill of lading uh, to state that the, this bill of lading, the terminology, need to apply to the cost. This is what we call a paramount cross. Uh, in, in Mandarin, that we call this is the, the Zhizhang Liao Bang. That means uh, all the term and condition of the, this term, uh, this term and the condition of this building need to refer to the, the U.S. COSA. And then, uh, after the introduction of the terminology, then we back to the, the stories about this case. That is, the, actually, this is the case and that is it happens uh, in the states, the, the, the shipper would like to share the cargo. Uh, the cargo is the human plasma. And uh, the shipper actually is, is the, the health care corporation. They would like to shift the, this cargo from the from the from from the uh, Rangers, Kentucky, and then that is mean the, from the U.S. Then after they have the you know they have the inland transportation. They are having the Norfolk. That needs to have the port. Then they have the ocean shipment to the Europe, that is Vienna, Austria. Then uh, so actually this got involved the the multi model multi model transportation and the, the carrier the multi model transportation provider is the APL, the American Freight Line. 
and uh, you can see that they are actually have the inland transportation and then they have the ocean transportation and they are also including uh, inland transportation in the European. Uh, but actually it's not the cargo damage in this, the first inland transportation already, so the cargo is total loss in this. Uh, therefore, the actually the cargo owner, they get the compensation from the, their cargo insurance. And then the cargo insurance, then they uh, have the subrogation right and try to uh, chase that uh, recourse to the inland transporter. Uh, so that is actually, uh, you can see, just as we mentioned, that uh, the, the bill of lading is uh, easy uh, by the multi-model transportation provider, the APL. But actually, in this bill of lading, there have no such name of the inland transportation provider. Uh, so that's the, 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 ins the insurance company Actually, the insurance company is called the Royal and the Sum Alliance Insurance Company. Then they suit the inland transporter, and as for them, they need to follow the common amendment, just as we mentioned before. And uh, actually, this common amendment, they have a, a particular. Now, they, they uh, also write that the, the claimant no need to prove that they have the negligency of the carrier. So that is be very easier need to have the carrier need to respond for the cargo damage. Uh, so after that, then, uh, but the inland transport provider, they just apprise that uh, they allegation that this carriage even, that is the, you know, uh, even uh, they are not the party of the bill of lading, but they still have the right to apply the COSA. Even COSA is to regulate uh, the ocean carriage instead of the inland. But I mean, they think that they still have the right to apply the COSA and then to apply the limitation of liability stipulated in the COSA. So this case uh, has been. Um, have been discussed and finally that in this case they have reached a decision that the, they, the, the district court of New York that they, they think they have to make a decision that they say that the inland transportation provided that they are also right to apply the, the, the cause of limitation of liability of the carrier. Uh, just as we mentioned from the first beginning, actually this is not the first case for this kind of the argument. And actually that they have so many cases that happened before. But from the, all these cases that telling us that even that is subcontractor of the bill of lading, even they are not a party of the bill of lading, but they are still authorized to have the pride to apply the limitation of liability. From this story that just tell us that even the subcontractor that they can apply the limitation of liability. How come that the freight forwarder, just like us, that we issue our own house bill of lading, but I mean, so, so of course, when we issue the house of bill of lading, our position will be the same with the actual carrier. So of course, that we can apply the limitation of liability. What is the term, stipulate the term of uh, and the condition of our bill of lading? So uh, we just try to remind, uh, remind you that uh, when such kind of, I mean, so if they have, a, unfortunately, they have such kind of cargo damage in heaven, so don't forget about to apply the limitation of liability. Think that is the privilege, privilege of your right. Thank you. That is, is the first time that we would like to share with you the views hope that we still have the second time and third time that we share with you more case. Thank you.